How's it going guys? Mongoose here again. This will be the uh, third and final video that I make in this instructional series for beginners. Um, I think I've pretty much covered everything that I can for as far as a, uh, a beginner rider goes. Um, everything from inspecting your bike, getting on it, starting it, moving, braking, cornering, um, understanding counter steering, all that stuff has already been covered. So this last detail is just more or less going to be refining your technique and um, you know once you do get more comfortable with your bike and you get out there and explore the world a little bit more um, and you start getting into areas that maybe have more uh, more traffic like the city and stuff uh, there's going to be things that you're going to want to know so to start with i wanted to start with uh, how to position yourself on the motorcycle um, so that you're comfortable and also so that you um, can be a very effective rider and uh, so you're riding safe so the first thing most motorcycles have a uh, have a kickstand on the left side of the bike. So when you get on the bike, you always want to mount the bike from the left side. Um, this one, of course, is up on a, a chalk, so it's not obviously on its stand, but same thing applies. Throw a leg over, and then on the other side, you should be putting your foot either on the ground or up on one of the pegs, and then you lift the bike up, okay? That much is pretty simple. I assume you know how to get on a motorcycle at this point. So, while you're riding, there's a couple different um, positioning techniques that you're going to need to know. So I'm just going to start with the bottom and work my way up. First is going to be your feet, okay? You don't want to ride with your feet so that the peg is way the hell over in this little groove on your boot or shoe or whatever, that the back part of your foot. You don't want to ride like that. The way that you want to ride is to have the area in between your toes and where it meets your foot, that little area in the middle there, you want to have your foot sitting on both pegs just like that. If you need to downshift, you get ready for it, or I mean if you need to upshift, you get ready for it if you know you're going to, you're going from a 30 zone to a 55, you just get your foot ready and then you click up through the gears, okay, and then resume that position with your foot on the peg. When you need to downshift, same principle, two different ways to do this. I choose to just hop forward like that. A lot of people will put their foot like this and then just click down through. Whatever one you want to do. It doesn't really make a difference. Same thing goes on the right side. You can't really see over there, but keep your foot off the brake when you need to. Move your foot up and use the brake. Okay, so moving farther up the bike, we're talking about knee position. The knees are very important because this is how you hold on to the motorcycle. If you're the kind of person that's riding with all of your weight on the front like this and just holding yourself up, um, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Every time you go over a bump, the bike is now absorbing the shock of the motorcycle itself and all your, you know, all your weight moving around on top of it. So what you want to do is you want to hold yourself up with your knees, leave enough space in between your crotch. <laughs> And the gas tank, um, especially if you're a guy. Trust me. If you have your nuts right against the tank, okay, and you need to stop real quick, you're going to be singing soprano for a while. All right? Um, especially if you have a girl on the back, and she's more or less inexperienced, and she slides off her seat a little bit, slams into your lower back, and then guess where your fucking nuts are? Smushed against the tank. Okay? So... Just stay back a little bit. It's common sense. Leave enough room in there to move, <laughs> to be comfortable. Um, like I was saying though, your knees, so you're basically going to use your foot with your foot there. You're going to press your knee into the tank like this. Okay, I'm only holding on with one knee right now. See? So with both knees, it'd be even more effective. You don't have to press super hard, just enough to hold yourself up. What you should be able to do to be able to tell that you're holding yourself with your knees and not your hands, you're going to want to ride with your back as straight as possible. It doesn't mean you have to sit up like this and like, you know, ah, like reach for the handlebars and look like a dork while you're riding. You just want your back somewhat straight. So if you're holding on with your knees and your back is straight, you should be able to do this fairly comfortably. See, I'm hovering over the gas tank. I'm not laying on it. I'm just holding myself up. Okay. 
The amount that you hold yourself up with your hands is very, very minimal. You want your legs and your lower back to do most of the work. Like right now, I'm barely holding on, but it's enough to, you know, use the controls if I have to, okay? Um, the reason you want to keep your back straight and sit up pretty much as much as possible is if you're crouching like this all the time, like the slumped over position, you're going to notice that your thighs are going to start burning because they are holding up so much weight because you're not using your back, you're not using your legs, okay? So, keep those knees pressed into the tank, use your lower back, support your body weight. Right now, I'm perfectly, perfectly comfortable. If I put a little tiny bit of weight on the bars, it's even more comfortable and I'm, I'm not so, I'm not to the point where my legs are supporting me 100% and I'm not, you know, my back is nice and straight, so my lower back and my thighs are doing most of the work. But then again, I'm not too tight on the bars. When you're very tight on the bars, it causes what's called um, excessive rider input. So that means every little, you know, jerk and everything, it just becomes way too much and the bike is going to, um, it's going to interpret all those little movements and think that you're trying to steer it some way or the other. Okay, this is pretty simple shit. Um, as far as cornering goes, just stay on the seat. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, keep in mind, this is a beginner video. I mean, there is techniques for, you know, like hanging way off the bike and stuff, but that I wouldn't consider that a beginner technique. I would consider that more intermediate to, uh, to advance. So for now, as you're taking your turns, just keep your ass in the seat. You don't need to lean off too far. Make sure you're looking into your corners, you know, as you're turning. Pretty simple. So keep your foot there. Keep your knees in the tank. Keep your back straight and don't lay on the bars. Just hold on to the bars enough to use the controls, okay? So moving on, some more, uh, some more tips to refine your skills on a motorcycle. This one is, uh, it's fairly important as far as cornering is concerned. Um, believe it or not, your tires take a little bit of time to heat up. Um, when you jump on your bike, especially if you live in a colder climate, such as Western New York, uh, when you first jump on your motorcycle, your tires are going to be cold. So after, uh, like when you jump on it and you go out and start, you know, hitting roads and stuff, you got to give your, your tires a couple minutes to warm up. If you try to hit corners super hard and your tires are cold, that's more of a possibility of you, uh, you know, going down. Just because the warmer they are, the stickier they are, the more grip that they're going to have. So that's just a quick little tip. Um, the, the main focus, I guess, of this video is going to be driving in heavier traffic. Um, I mean, I don't really want to go too far today because it is supposed to rain, so I'm going to kind of do this the best I can uh, in town, uh, in Perry, that is. Uh, Perry is a pretty small town, but it is 12 o'clock, which means um, there's going to be plenty of traffic. So, there's just certain things you want to pay attention to. Um, and one thing I didn't mention when I was sitting on the bike earlier in the video um, about posture and positioning and stuff is potholes. Stand up. You don't have to stand like way up here. Just, you know, bring yourself up enough to get your ass off the seat and that, that way your legs are working as a shock absorber instead of you hitting it and then your friggin' head goes everywhere. So, if you're coming into a crowded area where there's going to be some traffic, which of course today is not going to work for me, but I can still still emphasize what I'm talking about, you want to pay attention at every intersection. Don't go blazing through it. If you see an intersection, just kind of sight down left and right, make sure it's clear. Same with this one. Green light. No one's coming. If you're driving close to the side of the road or wherever, you're going to want to watch people's front wheels. If you see front wheels that are turned outwards, that could be a person that is getting ready to pull out that may not see you. And if that person cuts you off, there's an accident. Okay? Um, so you want to constantly scan the road. Like right now, I'm kind of watching that orange car, but I'm also using my peripherals 
to check for people coming off of streets and all sorts of stuff. Most motorcycle accidents that involve a motorcycle being hit by a car or vice versa is usually caused by a driver making a left-hand turn. Because let's say this white car was pulling in that driveway, didn't see me, pulls right in front of me. If you're driving a bike, you have to assume that you are invisible to everyone around you because a lot of the times you are. A motorcycle it has a smaller profile. It's a smaller um, visual profile anyways. So you just have to kind of assume that people cannot see you. Like this guy here, he might not double head check, that truck goes by and he thinks it's safe to pull out. So just be ready. Be ready for anything. And another thing, um, when you go to the gas station, it's not like you have to fill up your horn. Um, a horn is an electronic device. Oh, always make sure to be courteous to other riders. I usually wave to everyone. It doesn't matter if it's a sport bike, cruiser, whatever. I will wave to everyone just because I'm not a dickhole. But anyways, as I was saying, your horn is a very good tool. Um, especially if you still have a stock exhaust on your bike. Whether you have a stock exhaust or whether you have a full system that's loud as hell, it doesn't matter. Because if somebody's not behind you, they can't hear your exhaust as well as a horn that is in front of you. If somebody is going to pull out or inching forward, do not be, don't hold back with a horn. You can be as liberal as you fucking want to with that horn. So if you're driving and something like that happens, what the fuck are you thinking? Come on, bitch. Jesus Christ. You fucking just back up through the fucking road. Now, as far as riding in the rain, I can't really demonstrate that because it's not raining. And also, um, my GoPro has a skeleton housing, so I can't exactly take it out when it is raining. Um, raining is actually, rain is a pretty simple thing. You just drive extremely careful. You don't lean the bike over super hard. You're very, very, uh, very, very um, conservative with your throttle. If you gas it really hard, there's more of a chance your tires are going to slip and you're going to wipe out. See how this guy's wheels are turned a little bit left? Keep an eye on that shit. Might seem like a lot to do while you're riding, but believe me, you got nothing else to do while you're riding than to ride your bike. You don't have the distractions of a cell phone. You don't have the distraction of a, you know, kids in the backseat screaming. You don't have the distraction of fucking with a stereo. There's no, there's absolutely no excuse for not scanning the road. Um, another thing that while you're in town, um, and out of town, this actually kind of applies to both. There's something called target fixation, which I kind of touched on yesterday. If you look at something, your body is naturally going to want to go to that object. So basically with the, with the target fixation, you just don't want to look at stuff that you don't want to hit. If you ever noticed when you're driving down the road, and you see a pothole, if you look right at it, even if you try to avoid it, you're probably gonna hit it because you're staring at it. Okay? So, just keep your eyes open. Concentrate on the road, not on the, the hot girl walking by. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple. So here's a pothole, don't stare at it. Stare around it. Roll that shit on. Yeah. Anyway, so right now, my scenery is pretty wide open. It's, it's nothing but fields. I mean, there's a little bit of short grass here. The likelihood of a, a deer running out in front of me is not very good. Just because it's all opened up, I can see everything. This is an appropriate time to do the speed limit, okay? That is all going to change very quickly. So right now, I'm starting to get into woods. See how tall these trees are? This is a perfect place for a deer to be hiding or any kind of animal. I mean, shit, even something as small as a raccoon can jump out and, uh, you know, upset your front wheel enough to throw you from the bike. 
So I'm only doing 43. It's 55 through here. I'm choosing to do 43 because I want to have more stopping distance. Plus I'm going downhill. If I'm going downhill, that's just more G-force that I have to fight if I have to hit the brakes. Plus these corners are pretty, uh, pretty gnarly. So again, I didn't really go over 45 there. Pretty sharp corners, unfamiliar area. I mean, I've been through here, but I don't like go through this corner day after day. So I'm still kind of unfamiliar with it. But you can see that there's still a lot of wooded area, so you don't really want to fuck around too much by going too fast. You definitely don't want to be way the hell over here, riding right next to the woods, because you have zero reaction time for when an animal runs out. So there's one last thing I kind of wanted to leave off on uh, to kind of end this, uh, this three-parter, this three-part series thing. It's, uh, it's common sense, but apparently it needs to be explained to some people. Um, if you go looking for trouble, you will find it. Do not do stupid shit to piss off cars or other bikers. It's that simple. I, uh, I get tailgated all the time by motorcycles and specifically by cruisers. I don't have a whole lot of guys on sport bikes that will ride my ass while I'm in my car, but I have cruisers that will be so far up my fucking ass that I can smell their fucking body odor. Okay? Um, just don't be a dickhole and you can avoid unnecessary bullshit and drama and trouble. So that's, uh, that's pretty much all the information that I have for uh, beginners. Uh, people that are very, very new to my, riding a motorcycle. Maybe you've never even had a leg over one. Or maybe you have one and you just uh, need to refine your technique. Or you know, you've only had your bike a week and you're just looking for helpful tips. Um, that's what the comment section's for. If there's something that I didn't mention in the video and you have a question about it, that's why I make these videos, is to help other people and because I enjoy doing it. Um, so yeah, if, if there's something that I didn't cover, please leave a comment, ask me a question, even if it's the dumbest little thing or something you think is dumb, you, you never know. You might be asking a question that's legitimately um, a really good question. Um, and as always, I mean, if you like my channel, if you like my videos, if you think I'm funny and you don't mind me swearing every other word, um, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And that way, uh, every time I upload a video, you'll get a nice little notification letting you know that uh, I got into some other kind of mess. <laughs> so I will uh, I'll catch you guys later.